speak about politics, speak about the economy, speak about social development of any country, you speak about young people. Let me take you back to the Arab Spring, when countries like Egypt were, you know, fighting the likes of Austin Mubaraka. Young people participated so much in seeing that such countries were liberated. Come back to Africa, the African National Congress, for NASA here in Uganda, but also each and every place in Africa, you see young people participating in the political transformation of their countries. Let me take you to uh, maybe Europe. During the coal mines, it was the young people who participated and broke their backs to ensure that the white man's economy actually lives up to what it is today. The social aspect as well, you cannot discuss all this without factoring in young people. Well, it is strike knowledge now that Africa as a country, its largest population actually constitutes of young people. I guess that is why the International Congression on Young People decided that um, you know every 12th of August is declared International Youth Day. Well, this year's theme was around um, intergenerational solidarity, creating a world for all ages. But we also know that the government of Uganda took a cabinet decision to postpone the International Youth Day celebrations to 26th of August. Well, today we shall explore that decision, but also we shall understand what this day means for us as a country, but also to the continent of Africa at large. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Youth Roundtable. I am, of course, joined by, as usual, a panel of distinguished ladies and gentlemen. But now I have the honor to introduce to you this afternoon, and I'll ask them to say hello to you. Well, to my extreme left is uh, a person whose face you have seen on your TV shows, for those who watch NBS, by the names of Olibi, Olivia Nakalembe. Olivia is a journalist with the NBS and Next Media. Many thanks for joining us, Olivia. Thank you so much for the invite. I'm really pleased to be here to speak on behalf of the young people, mostly, of course, from those who come from the profession that I fall into. Okay. Many thanks for joining us. Yes, next to um, Olivia is now a second time on the Youth Round Table, Mr. Nelson Ogawa, who is a lawyer and also the national leader of the Alliance for National, the, the national youth leader, sorry, of the Alliance for National Transformation. Nelson, many thanks for joining us once again. It's a pleasure being hosted once again on the Youth Roundtable. Yeah, thank you for sparing the time to be with us. Next to Nelson is uh, the gentleman who, has, who is down in a very beautiful tie, <laughs> Mr. Bill Clinton Waheriza, a student leader at Macquarie University, but also I know he has interest in the area of journalism. Waheriza, many thanks for joining us. My absolute pleasure to be at the Roundtable today. You can say hello to our viewers this afternoon. Um, I am really so pleased to be here and uh, uh, for this discussion I just pledge it becomes of so much benefit and more so the, the, the population that I still represent and that is the students from the Makere Fraternity and any other people around. All right, many thanks and last uh, but not least on the Youth Roundtable is uh, Shifa Ndagiri. She is um, a statistician by Statisti... That, that one is very complicated <laughs> by profession, yes, but also she is the deputy spokesperson of uh, the GMA political party. She family, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I hope the discussion is beneficial and knowledgeable. All right. Uh, thank you. Nelson, let me begin with you. Let's, let's cut the chase, right? Um, the African Union, for example, took a resolution to to the effect that uh, all African states or all member states must see to it that they empower the young people of their country. But also one of the important aspects of this empowerment was the establishment of national youth councils. I think Uganda in that regard has you know, respected that resolution and has gone ahead to actually implement that particular uh, decision. But also we know that the international convention that sat, I think, in 1999 declared every 12th of August International Youth Day. But I think the question still remains, is this day really important? Is it worth celebrating? Because many have said that it's a day when young people get to take the stocks of the gains and challenges, but also really, do you think it's a day worth celebrating given the continuous disregard for young people in terms of political and economic dispensation? Well, uh, thank you, moderator, uh, once again. My name is Agava Nelson, um, a lawyer, an advocate for young people's rights and I'm the National Youth Coordinator for Alliance for National Transformation, a very best political organization ready to transform the political culture of our country, Uganda. Uh, getting rolling is that we have had uh, a number of uh, you know, designated days, mm. uh, Women's Day, 
uh, Father's Day, or uh, you know, Youth Day, and others. Uh, the major reason is to give that honor recognition of, you know, uh, in particular to say youth, uh, that uh, recognition of their contribution uh, in the space they occupy. And uh, given that I think globally um, and on Africa, for example, is that Africa is you know, constituted of a young population. And in that, it, is, um, it was prudent and very, very valid for, 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 for the assembly to say, look, we need to give recognition because of the contributions made by the young people in the spaces they occupy. The one reason to, you know, there's one reason to say, is it, is it really worth celebrating? Um, or it's about recognition and that's all, giving you a place of comfort as young people, uh, you know. For me, I think it's high time we step up to claim what belongs to us. It's one thing to give you a recognition, but it's also another thing to, you know, to make you be of that recognition. So as a country, Uganda, we just saw, you know, just last week, we saw that even the country itself does not give priority to young people. How do you dare have a country take a decision to postpone an internationally recognized youth day to a different date by giving, you know, uh, uh, what I would say, uh, very minor reasons of funds, you get it. So that shows something that is not like a disaster of Bududa. <laughs> that it happened and probably there is no money in the, in the fund. But this is a, a calendar, a calendar uh, you know, uh, designated day, uh, yearly, year in, year out. How would that be? That speaks on how they look at us young people, but also a call to all young people you know, in Uganda, across Africa, it's high time we step up and reclaim our spaces, we claim, uh, we reclaim our rights. Okay. It's one thing that, yes, they have, they recognize us, but it's also another thing to ensure that we feel that recognition that has an attachment and is of value to us. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Olivia, let me just come to you. The theme, let me just paraphrase it, intergenerational solidarity, creating a world for all ages. Does this theme, do you think it rhymes with the current day and era, with the prevailing circumstances? We are post COVID-19 recovery, you know, economies are grappling. Shouldn't the theme have had something to do with the economy, but rather we are looking at intergenerational solidarity and creating a world for all ages. What do you make of this theme vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the current circumstances? I'm pretty sure for every single person out there or for the different stakeholders that of course came together to create uh, such a theme did have a number of things you know behind their minds but of course it's been say two years down the road from the time we were badly hit the globe was badly hit by COVID-19 by the COVID-19 pandemic and of course uh at around this time, we definitely need to be looking at recovery. But of course, um, not dispensing the fact that solidarity for, you know, like uh, the, the different generations that we do have also does come in handy because we are not going to remain in a state of recovery minus, you know, advancing to what recovery brings along, uh, which takes me back to definitely the theme that you did highlight. And I also feel... It definitely does come through at quite um, a, 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 a different time. We are dealing with different times. Uh, we are dealing with different, say, for example, economic times. We are dealing with times where our social constructs have been um, have been affected, of course, by the COVID nineteen pandemic. But also, I do think it brings along certain interesting facts, you know, and certain interesting constructs. If we are to talk about solidarity for the different generations that we do have, which definitely speaks to the youth, it incorporates not only us, but also the different other, say, generations that 
coexist mm. alongside us. We do have, you know, the old, the elderly. We do have the children. We do have those who are moving out, you know, of the youth bracket. We do have those who are assuming um, this particular docket, say, mm. of the young people. So I, I, I definitely think it's not really so far-fetched, but then we need to harness the different opportunities mm. that do come along uh, or that do come with it. Um, should we have done better? Yes, we, we could have done better. But then I feel like we need to look more on the positive side of things. Mm. Let's look at the different opportunities that the theme comes with. The youth were not the only persons, say, for example, that were affected by COVID-19. Mm. The children, for example, in Uganda, we did see, uh, well, at least according to media reports and some of the stories that we did cover, we did see that many of the young children um, were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. In other words, they, when they left school, which at that time was not uh, perceived as highly a secure space, it brought to us, it, it brought it out to the general public that actually schools played a very significant role in protecting the children. What am I trying to say? It's not only the youth that were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, like say, raising the numbers of unemployment rates amongst the young people, but also the young children who at one time are definitely going to step into this docket of being young people. Wow, yes. amazing. <laughs> Uh, Bill Clinton, let me come to you. Mm. And um, <coughs> Comrade Agaba did mention, he did hint on it, mm. the aspect that uh, cabinet took a decision to postpone this very important, well, at least we assume it is important, given the country's demographics, you know. Do you think this is in itself, this decision is in itself a representation of the lack of value that this government attaches to young people? Uh, Mr. Moses, uh, I think... Uh it is not an assumption that this day is not important. It is really so important with having half of the African uh, population is being dominated by uh, youths. So it is really important for us to really celebrate. But uh, if Nelson can really say that we have so many public holidays and we cannot celebrate this one in particular, I need him to tell me uh, from his research how many should be funded by the government. Because we have Matters Day, you well know government does not fund that. It is not on the budget, national budget. We have, uh, we have. Okay, you want to do the the, the NRM Tare Sita. Sita? That one is NRM funded. Let us not say that it is particularly government. on the government budget. I think you should you know that mm. unless I, I statistics can quote me wrong. We have the Idil Fitli. I mean. So those are not within the budget of the nation, but we commemorate all those. Father's Day, I mean, they, there is no money that is budgeted in this nation for Father's Day or Mother's Day. Mm. So, in this particular one, in the crisis that we are living in here as Uganda, the situation that is there, uh, this day coming and we don't really celebrate it with reasons given that there is no funds. We have had these elections. We also need MPs. We need a full representation of the, of, of the House. So, Saying that money is not there is not saying that the, that the youths are not really a priority in this nation. Saying let us have this first and then we can handle the others next. But even recognition is really worth, Mr. Nelson. Recognition is worth. Posing most of the things on that day and then, I mean, we, we celebrate. Everyone was in aware that, was in a know that it is an international youth day. You ought to celebrate some way. You see, and I'm glad that you brought in this contradiction, Bill Clinton, mm. because my argument is that um, government has money to hold by elections. Mm. And you seem to tilt to the line of saying that these are constitutional obligations, that these, these, these parliamentary seats must be filled, right? Yes. But you yes. also know that there are MPs who have been incarcerated and they haven't had representation in the August House. Mm the Honorable Sewanyana and the Honorable Segirinya. So tilting your argument towards saying that it is, it is a constitutional obligation for the people to have representation and therefore government must move at all costs to hold by elections vis-a-vis -a, -vis a constitutional provision of Article 32 that provides for affirmative action. Mm. Affirmative action of discriminated and less privileged groups of, groups of society. Where are the young people for? So I, I think that you are, you're choosing to use the law where it favors your argument and disregarding it where it doesn't favor your argument. 
Um, that is not the case, Mr. Moses, unless you just want to bring it like that, <laughs> because I have always found uh, such problems and uh, such things are not near in a discussion of people who are opposing anyway. So, but I must no, tell you, I'm, there I'm is the, always I'm an agenda, Mr. Moses. I am, I'm, yes, I'm yes, yes. And, and That's why she's smiling and really enjoying what you're really <laughs> asking me. But, uh, Mr. Moses, mm. there is always an agenda in whatever things you do. Mm. You know that I woke up with such a program. Mm. I am very sure that this government can have to say, can choose to say that, let us have a representation first. Let us hold the by-elections first. Mm. As the NRM government, mm. they can have, uh, they say, let us have the by-elections first. Mm -hmm. uh, this case of Sewanya, it is not ending today. Mm. It is not ending today. It is mm. still there because with the evidence, with all we have seen, you mm. see that the case is not end today. Mm. So we can have these other chapters on a halt. And then what matters, what seems so important mm. for the government can mm. become first. And then these other things come next. Okay, so it's a question of priority. Priority. Yes. Let me just give it. Fair right. enough. She first. So that means we come after all this. The youth. The youth that comes after. According to your priority list that you it can the come then everything else in the youth, yeah? Because we have had the parliament before, so we really need, yeah, we can come after. It is very, very, very <laughs> interesting. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. No, and, <laughs> and, and just to protect um, Comrade Bill Clinton, he's actually very right in his argument. Yeah. You know, uh, a parliament is actually is a, an organ of government. So one way or another, it is actually oh my a God. very supreme. <laughs> it is it is actually a very supreme institution. So oh no, please! It Just is nearing the how many years the government is, is it running. It is a valid argument to say that parliament must be fully constituted. So I agree, <laughs> Shifa. Let me come to you. Let me give you a hypothetical situation. Assuming you sat down with the youth of Jema, and you are tasked to come up with a theme for the International Youth Day, do you think you'll come up with something like this? Or you, th or you feel that there are other issues that a theme like, 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 like one of this kind needs to, you know, um, critically look at or point out? Well, um, for the theme, it was intergenerational. Solidarity, creating a world for all ages. Um, uh, it is International Youth Day. Yeah. And I think it is a little selfish for the, whoever put up the theme to, okay, we, we have to consider all the ages. Yeah. But then creating a world of all ages, and you're talking about youth, and what, what are you trying to bring on the table? You're celebrating us, and then you're trying to bring in everyone else that you can bring in. What's the point? But then, the beginning of the intergenerational solidarity. solidarity. It is necessary, but the second part, creating a world of ages, of all ages, it is the youth day. Mm. <laughs> so all the ages can come in any other day. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, can, it, can, it can be my birthday, and you say, yes, so now it's your birthday, and let's celebrate everyone who was born. Whichever other day. Okay. That was a little selfish. Mm. I, would have, I would come up with anything else better than that. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. So, of course, the. the... Oh. <laughs> yeah, the, this day. Okay, I need to attend in... my thoughts. No, this, this Maybe day. just to differ yeah. a little from okay. what um, she's put across. We, the young people, do not exist alone. We definitely coexist with, you mm. know all the other edges yeah. mm. there's hell no way we can achieve the goals that we want mm. minus one the mm -hmm. support of those who came before us mm -hmm. minus the support of those who are there say for example in government as we speak mm. minus the support say of you know those what younger if, than what us if, what if those, those younger what if than those, us those those entities that you're mentioning are actually the oppressors what if? What if? Most definitely now. Do that they, is where the do catch. Then become uh, allies or. No, that is where the catch point is. Mm. It is not until you equip us, the young people, mm. or we equip ourselves with the necessary, say, infrastructure or mm. equipment mm. to make sure that we lie as with those who came before us or the ones you've chosen to call oppressors mm. to step aside mm. and let us occupy the space so you're saying, we feel you're we saying, are supposed to occupy. You're saying, we should, you're saying we should negotiate. <clears throat> we should negotiate. I'm saying we should, not let, we should not let ourselves stand alone because, okay. Okay. well, th there's little we can achieve <laughs> if we are Let's standing alone. Let's give Shifa to complete her, her argument. Yeah. Olivia, I, I, I'm not against that creating all the ages. If anything, I'm in, I'm in for learning from everyone else. You understand? Mm. But it's the youth day. 
You understand? It's like saying it, today is the journalist day. And then they make it a point to say that you have to celebrate with all the other the lawyers. The... Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so I, I think that her opinion is that this day should have been set up exclusively for the youth. to look at youth matters. Mm. And Which is quite girls. understandable. Yeah. May, maybe, uh, moderator. Yeah, sure. How did this uh, thing come into play? We need also to understand mm. that uh, globally, there is a high threat of, um, you know, they, I think they shaped it, they called it ageism. Yeah. On how we feel, how we think, and how we act. One, how we feel, I mean how we think, stereotyping. Saying the young thinks that way. The old thinks that way. And uh, with that, on the global dynamics, it changes. Mm. In Africa, uh, old people, there is the geotocracy uh, thinking mm. that the older you are, the better position to run affairs. Mm. Whereas, uh, what, let's say in the West... Better position? Just, just, just a moment. Okay. It, I'm saying stereotyping. Whereas in the West, you will find that the younger you have, uh, you know, the younger you are, the better positioned, knowledgeable, informed Definitely. to run the affairs in the interest of the country. Look, we have had countries where almost 35 and below, all, mis all ministers are 35 years and below. But, oh, hey, hold up, Nelson. Is that a right stereotype? No, no, no. I, I want to, we are, we are coming in, in all fairness. Yes. Is it, it a right stereotype? He's trying to even, ages. even the way you're putting it out, yes. aren't you switching it up? N not switching because it. Because when you look at African countries, the revolutionary leaders yes. all came into power at very young ages. Our president here at Absolutely. 41, Absolutely. Thomas Sankara at 33, you know, uh, Samora Machel at yes. 36, yes. you know. The question is, I think, all, how did they come? How did power? they come? Co Was it a peaceful <clears throat> transition? Co In other words, the older ones handing over power to young people, you and, know, in a more peaceful way, or they had why, to grab it. And that's why it, I it, asked you earlier on that, are we going to negotiate or are we going to forcefully capture these spaces? So, may, maybe just to, to wrap yeah, yeah. up something, is that the moment, because there is that uh, contestation of who is better positioned mm. across, you will find that now here in Uganda, uh, if you're young mm. and you're competing, let's say, for an office, mm you know there's this thing of you're young huh mm. uh will you we expected someone bigger to be competing for a position of a ceo mm. or you know for a position of hr mm -hmm. you get it mm -hmm. so when we look into that mm. you look at on how our representation is made mm. you know young people being represented how many uh young people uh, uh you know um mps we have in parliament mm. so all that so they came up that there is a threat mm. which is costing everybody. Uh, and that is the way we, we look at each other and, you know, discriminate against each other mm. or even think that a particular group thinks this way, whereas the other group thinks the other way. Okay. And, 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 and they came up with three strategies. Okay. That was policy and the law. Mm -hmm. Two, having uh, to revive the education activities. Mm -hmm. Three, doing what we call intergenerational um, solidarity or unity, intergenerational mm. activities, mm. to ensure that there is so much of because, inclusion. Because my, my issue with that whole intergenerational uh, paraphrasing is that I think it's giving room for patronage. Because let us be it, intergenerational. Exactly. Then you are going to be, oh, our father figure, oh, okay, pl okay please guide us on this issue. Oh, okay, you know. In Patronage. whatever manner, do you try to, so, are you trying to gauge this discussion in saying we can do our with any other generation and we just concentrate on the youth? No, no, uh, what I'm trying to must... say is that we shouldn't curtail ourselves. We, we shouldn't be boxed into, into thinking that we cannot survive alone as young people. Yes, youth, there yes. is need for, it, for, 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 I mean, we have to coexist. So many things, consultations is what. Yes, yeah, yeah. so many things. But also, shouldn't such a day be for streamlined? to curtail on the issues of young people. We it most definitely it can. an infringement? It most definitely can. But however, before we come to that judgment, oh, I'd beg are you, are you, that we look... You're making him... Okay. Uh, I'd beg that we kind of backtrack. How have the other themes that came before this one been phrased? Mm -hmm. Where have they put their center of focus? If they have capitalized on the youth issues, on issues 
pressing or pertaining the young people than for this one celebration. Mm -hmm. And don't quote me wrong, for this one celebration, we can, you know, get to see or to hear what do these other stakeholders mm. pertaining our survival as the young people have mm. to say. Good question. To, to, maybe, maybe, to, Good to question. defend what she, she was saying, mm. for Christ's sake, who, who amongst us does not need to sit on that day mm. with so many people who made it at their youth time as models? Because mm. we are living in this, because uh, with the culture that we have here mm. in the mm. African setting, mm. you need to really copy from someone and you can speak like someone, you can present yourself like someone. I mean, you can, you just want to achieve or win this world just mm. like someone did it. Mm. So, it, I mean, just pushing away some of the people that could, mm. could come and because you are talking about His Excellency, the President, who came at that age. Mm. I mean, that is evident enough that even we need him on that day to come and speak to us or mm. to come and really uh, so, add capacity yeah, to us. I, I think that the point you guys are trying to make is that to be able to see ahead, you must stand on the shoulders of the giants. Absolutely. Right? Fair enough. And that is okay. Let me give Nelson a chance to complete his point, <laughs> then I'll uh, shape out to you. You see, yeah. I think uh, um, there is a narrative out there Mm. And, and that's why I even my statement, if you quoted me right, is that there is a seeming threat of the young people, you know, against, uh, you know, the ages, other ages. Uh, you know, statistics, she's a, stat a statistician, 78% yeah. yeah. uh, of our country, you know, of about uh, 44 million people is composed of young people. Yeah. 52% of which are below the age of 15. Now, when you look at the, the global trends, and when you are talking about the ages in question yeah. of how we look at each other and discriminate, yeah. you'll find that nowadays, um, what, Do, what but makes Nelson sense? Nelson choose to call it discrimination or division? I mean, just a setting. It is just a setting mm. that uh, in the institutions we belong to, a certain age will be obligated to certain and, and specific roles they play. It is not. It is. It is. It is not separation. My my my, my, my brother. Mm. My brother. Mm. You see, when you're talking about ageism, now I want us to understand it. Yeah. It is the way you relate, the way you think, the way you feel, and when you say the way you act, act comes with how do I, you know, how do you act against each other. The act is, is defined by discrimination. How you know you find you act as, you know, you have been in school where you have a particular, there is a particular, you know, let's say, sect of is, individuals or, you know, students who probably studied this way, speak this English or speak the other. There is how they act. You get it? That's where I'm taking you. Two, when you're talking of the feeling, the feeling is this, how, what do you feel about something? stereotyping of even when you know giving a judgment a face value judgment when you're talking of uh um you know uh, feeling how what is the prejudice that comes with you know the way you feel mm. how you know how do you give judgment mm. now look when you sum all that together it gives you why there is a threat out there about young people we are many but also, when you look at, I said, the old age. So who threatens who, Mr. Nelson? The young people. You see, we have all been fighting for inclusion. Mm. Okay? And now, we have been saying, no, we need to be, you know, to be included in all government programs and policies. Mm. Not only at, you know, the dining, the table for discussion, but also go ahead and look at monitoring. Go ahead. We start with policy. We monitor until Evaluate. implementation. Okay, you, you get it. Let's so all you. that put together is that they are looking all ways. Okay, how can we have this sorted or this challenge put right? And they are saying, look, can we have more dialogue? So that the dialogue, what a dialogue is one that is inclusion, mm -hmm. you know, that is inclusive rather. Can we have full representation that is really, you know, uh, equitable for both young and okay. old? Fair so enough, all yes. of that put together, my brother, is that there is a global threat about how young people look at. Because everybody says, I am not taking a position because the old people are occupying. We are all saying, look, the parliament is full of old people. 
these all other uh, you know offices are full of old people we are we young people that is you get it? that is only here in the culture of africa okay. look okay. here in the culture of Actually, africa yeah. when, when you go abroad no, when the moment someone turns the age of 55 they have retired but now for them they are saying ah now the threat in the in the in the us uh, let's say like us the threat is the old age aged people feel marginalized by the young age okay fair enough here in africa the young famous. age feel marginalized by the old age fair enough fair enough. as simple as that. Fair just as that Clinton, in just just later on i want to bring in shufa shufa um, when you look at the political discourse in uganda you have an lc5 chairperson who is i think about 27 years of age when you look at our parliament uh, more so from the opposition side the national unity platform majority of their mps are actually fairly young people you look yeah. at Honorable Kabuye is, you know, a fairly young man, but also, I mean, it and that cuts across. So the political question: Do you think, I mean, yourself, you are a deputy spokesperson of a political party at your age? So do you think that young people are actually gradually beginning to reclaim the political space in this country? I believe they are. Okay, why? Well, the numbers say it for themselves. Mm. Then they are younger. There are more younger people in the political space than there ever was. Really? Yes. But well, so the, the only issue right now is the quality of the young people that are being presented in the political spaces. Now that's a discussion for another day. No, no, we can explore it now. <laughs> but the numbers are bulging enough. We are mm. getting there. Okay. The only issue is the quality of the people we are presenting, the discussions they are putting on table, and if they are, well, if they are worth listening to, or, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So they are, we have young people in these spaces, but the we quality do. of their participation is Sometimes questionable. Okay. Um, anyway, right. would it be different? Because uh, I, I, I thank uh, Shifa for, for, for her point. But would it be different? Because we are looking at now, like what government, the, the, area, the, the recent decision of government to say, look, the International Youth Day can wait and celebrate it at a, at a... If we had, you know, good representation of the... Uh, majority young people, you know, oppression in parliament. And there is equal debate in cabinet. Do you think they would reach that conclusion, say so let's postpone? If we had at cabinet level, if we had, you know, a, a good representation of young people's voices. Mm. You get it? So, okay. 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 I, doubt, I doubt that would be the conclusion they would come up with. I mean, if... Uh, so, 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 me, ma, the, the solution, quality yes, about, yes, so but, 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 here, what we need the is not about the quality, the reasons for the waiting. also about numbers. Listen, listen, the reasons for the waiting would still be the same, whether you have, uh, how many numbers, it's, the reasons for the waiting. You, you see, I just want you to understand, if it, there is anything that made them wait, still it would be that reason. Okay, let, let me just, for viewers, mm. you we all know that you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate for. for. Mm. So, where you are not in the negotiating room, where a decision is going to be okay. made, no, Nelson, what Nelson, do you expect Nelson, to come let's, from let's that? Just cast or the light. decision. Yes. Let's cast a light into the Alliance for National Transformation. Yeah. You're speaking, you're chest thumping, and you're trying to blackmail. Okay, okay, not blackmail, what? but you're trying to castigate the NRM government for not, you know, having an inclusive uh, sort of government. But even in the ANT, I think you're the only person on your national executive. So aren't you, aren't you being hypocritical no, in your arguments? Maybe for the record, is that uh, the Youth League is represented by five on the neck. That is me, the chairperson, the four deputies from across the regions, East, West, Central, and Kampara Metropolitan. No, we are not leave alone the affirmative action positions. Yeah. Speak about those that are intentionally given to the young people. And, and, and in a fair and open electoral process, and, uh, and, and that young people get to occupy those positions at national level in your party. Leave alone the ones that you compete for as, as youth. Yeah. I mean where a young person competes with a fairly old person and the young person is chosen. No, I, I just as a, 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 you know, a snapshot on how ANT is constituted. We have, do, do you know, we have district coordinators who are young. In Unyangabo, our district coordinator is below age of 28. I think he's about 25. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ahura Ivan. And they sit on the neck? They, 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 yes, they, 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 you know, they, they cross over. We are looking at uh, Kasure Ismail, uh, who is a sub-regional coordinator of Weimar. 
We are having many young people. Okay. I think in <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> understood. So all those I hear young you. people. But also I hear to, you. Say, I... to say, to no, say, if sir. you look at people, I think for all political parties, it is only the ANT mm. where the majority of the candidates we had in the 2021 election, regardless of it, the young people, we are the majority in holding those cards. Why would they okay. Do okay, Oliver, you just raise your point. Important uh, sorry, Shifra did raise an important point, which I felt we needed to highlight more because it would give us solutions as to why, or even answers, it would give us both answers and solutions as to why this day was, say, postponed. You raised a very important point about the number of uh, youth representation rising, although the quality of debate. Yeah they present or they bring forth is wanting. And I feel like that is but where we needed that, to send Isn't that an unfair I, I felt allegation? That we, I, I felt well, we needed If to... you look at the youth members of parliament of this regime, these are astute... No. Uh, I, I, I felt Mr. we needed to send our... Young people. We needed to look send our attention Look at the Honorable Court Boniface. Look at the Honorable Nyamutoro Fiona. Those are young people who no, you, you no, can't no, no, like look at this. Well, when you list one, two, three, Mr. Moses, you get answers. Sure. Mr. Moses, Mr. Moses. Oh, okay. let's look at the yeah. constitution yeah. of parliament. Okay. Parliament has over five hundred. Uh, Moses, you know, uh, let us not how, look. How many of those are young people? young people? You know, within which the youth age bracket is stipulated thirty-five but, but, but and below. But also, saying but that also no how many times do they step you? on the mm. floor of parliament? to put across issues that actually affect young people. And that is why Which I is telling me you that you won't get what... I mean, no one will hand over to you these parliamentary positions. And so the question is, how best... Are you willing best, to fight and... I, the question I, I is, how best can things? we be able to reap... Thank you. Um, ...sensible, to reap, uh, knowledgeable, to reap informative representation from mm -hmm. the young people. But let's still go back to the political parties, mm. you know, that say, for example, are before us way back say 20 years back if you looked at the oldest political party in the country dp they did have a formidable youth platform uid mm -hmm. but f for the times we have even gone through university how strong has that been but remember these were the training grounds mm -hmm. for young people to take on the mantle of leadership mm -hmm. in case they assumed you know government positions um parliamentary representation, but where have they fallen short? UID right now, in my own opinion, is Isn't nowhere to be seen. Right? Let's look at the, uh, the let's NRM. look at the, the NRM. How many young people in NRM would stand forth, you know, put across issues that ah, actually affect here, young people? Sorry. They're here. It's not until the National yeah, Unity Platform it's not until yeah. the National Unity Platform, <laughs> you know, has, that interest has kind of thrown more light on youth representation, on, on issues pertaining young people, that they have actually woken up. I would not blame ANT that much because they are a new baby. They are a new kid on the block. But for the oldest political parties, I, felt, I feel like they have thrown away, you know, their mandate on equipping young people, you know, pertaining issues, but, you know, to take on leadership. But, and but, I feel like that, NRM, is, uh, that is heavily the responsible for the you, 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 you will yeah. just give that It example. could be fully NRM, fledged, NRM but it does fledged. not speak to quality. Mean. They will have the numbers, but it does not speak to the quality, which brings me but back to the lack of quality cuts point. across. I'd like to add are you saying that NDP youth have, have the quality? Or, or UID or ANT? She is not saying that only political parties have the quality. I just need us to understand this debate. In, when we are talking about solidarity, mm. it is not all about numbers. It is not about numbers. Mm. This is about realism. This is about strength. What even if, uh, even if like we are three of us here, what are we capable of doing? That is why you come up with a point of strength. I mean, the quality of leadership or the quality of youths that we have. So that is about, it's not about mobilizing so many numbers. My mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. is, but have the quality. existent political now, parties equipped about, young people you with, the necessary, party. with the necessary instruments to make sure that they assume power and put across sensible and quality I'd debate. like to add that question has about, not been answered. If you are to talk about the, uh, the party that, where I come from, for example, the Anglam, it has really had a representation of the youth. We have so many chapters in those schools. We have participated in the political spheres of whatever is happening there. We are leaders. Mm. We can speak. We are some. We are qualified as we need. Do they we go a long way in there. addressing the issues pertaining young people, or they only work in the interest of the party? 
And that's what's my the question. interest of the party? That's my question. Mm-hmm. Do they go a long way in addressing issues pertaining young people or they are only there to serve the interests of the party? What and that make, is where the catch point is. So what makes us come here and sit here, have this long discussion, if it is not what they have given us or... Or, or why anyway, why are we here i might say. the reason as to why i'm saying that to actually that is because for it, just live. look at the by elections that we have had where the spokesperson of nrm goes to a certain constituency and says if you do not vote for the nrm you will not get service delivery what does that speak to your party it simply means that when they do not vote someone in the nrm whether young or old service delivery will not you know reach that particular constituency but remember this will not only affect I the don't NRM know youth is, I don't it will affect is youth in NT, in Jema, in DP it will affect youth you know in the bigger picture mm. so what I'm trying to the question I'm trying but to that, pose that, is that mm. if at all Shifa is complaining about the number you know us the young people having the numbers you know of you know youth representation but we are lacking and wanting on quality debate have then because largely grooming young people to take on the political space where sensible and informative debates will actually happen mm. to make sure that we we ask for what belongs to us it's it's usually and largely in the political space where that takes place it's only then that you can get to benefit from the national cake it's the mandate of each political party to make sure that they groom young people to make sure that they take on this space where young people will come up on the floor of parliament to make sure that they ask for what belongs to the young people okay. but it, the political it, parties have not played it that is part. only a few mm-hmm. and there is no way we it is only a few enough. political parties enough. that we have known and see that have not done that but as for my party i know we have that is why we can sit on a debate and we debate that is why we have this Inclusion. I don't think so. Maybe, other parties, maybe. I think it Let's is where we have seen. Subject. Then they would have stood on the floor of Let's parliament to make sure example, that this day is not postponed. The, the they they would have stood on the floor of parliament to make sure that this day is not postponed, now, foreign, giving reason as to why it should be celebrated. How we the are all, how we are that. all, how we are all groomed is how how we all pre- represent uh, present ourselves is how we are groomed. If we can see what the youths in the in the loop are doing. I mean, is that something to copy about? Is that something to embrace about? Is that even we can trust them with parliamentary seats? Because we are fighting for the youth. So, I mean, no, 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 no. Because this is about quality. This is about and quality. We must explore and it. we are saying that she, brought, she came up with something like let the political parties groom its youths. Huh? Mm. Let us have quality of the youth representation. Let them be some. I mean, how we are so grooming maybe the matters. You could tell us how the NRM is grooming young leaders. Uh, well, how you mentioned you have university chapters. We have university I know chapters. You have a youth league, but what uh, have they and, done? And, 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 what and is visible have, to the eye they have, that uh, you can defend? Let's just hold up. I know they also have ideological clinics, which I haven't seen any other political party, we don't political have party them. doing. Yeah, we do. So, okay, but maybe not as um, as 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 intentional as I've seen the NRM doing. So I think that to be fair to the NRM, there's actually an effort to groom and mentor young leaders. And that is why even when you allege that there's no young people who rose, who, sorry, there's no young person who rose on the floor of parliament. That was not her allegation. To say, <laughs> no, no, she said that there was no young person who went to, on the floor of parliament to defend. How and she to, was on that, how much they defended. No, but sure. Because if no, you're no, giving no, me no, an example no. of only one member of parliament. Yeah. It just, um, you know, putting aside bring all the other five hundred and something bring MPs, one, two, three, those ones. It's, it's a stone we are throw in the ocean. Youth members of parliament and their quality, right? Yeah. So, and what we have now with us as a point of maybe evaluation are the youth MPs we have in parliament. And I'm telling you that one of them was on the floor of parliament and said he did. the cabinet decision was actually ultra-virus. Mm. It was is actually backed? unconstitutional. Because the law provides for affirmative well, action, blah, 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 all this. Right? Right? So many people. You know, it's not a question of no, backing. You, you see, you see. We are not defending anyone. A parliamentary sitting attacking. doesn't take 24 hours. Yes. It is time limited. There is no way you'll have all the youth MPs speaking on a given issue. You know, the speaker has to moderate fairly. I hear you. So, so. For us to have expected that all youth MPs should have spoken on that particular day. That is not the expectation we are putting up But if also, they... Okay, make your point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. 
Uh, okay, no, no, let me okay. lay my thoughts. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, no, I want to bring back Bill Clinton mm. because Clinton and the issue is controversial because and I understand where these guys are coming from. Mm. Yeah. That we cannot only focus on the numbers. There is need for us to also discuss the quality Thank of these you. numbers. Thank you. Because otherwise we shall push young people, push them there, and they'll get there and actually just sit Absolutely. and not do anything. No way. So Olivia makes a valid argument that we must be intentional about grooming young leaders. And it is the role of these political parties. And that is why I also put you on the spotlight because your political party boasts of having numbers, boasts of having, uh, you know, support of the young people, mm. you know. But should it only be about the support, or you should be able to intentionally groom these young people? For example, how would you evaluate the ideological clinics that you've been rendering to young people? Are they tilted towards the party ideology, or you go as far as you know teaching them? Uh, public Sex service, talks. you know, you know, broad-based or they're only about what you'd call, um, you know, I don't know. Brain. Yeah, I, 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 I get where, where you're coming from. For all these uh, ideological clinics you're talking about, the retreats that always happen in Chankwanzi, I mean, that only comes, it is actually not for the party. We have had so many youths come from any oh, other party so that come is, and join. Oh, it is open. So it is open okay. for anyone that buys any idea mm. of what values or, pre or principles or motives that we are teaching them. Mm. Because Which if we have... Which would be a dangerous thing no, for no, 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 no. people look, in this country. Look, dangerous how? How, for Christ's sake? What is being preached? What is dangerous country? about... Let me tell you. Telling the gospel, that you must love your country. The gospel you is must. like this. What is so bad about telling you how much you should love your culture, whether you come from Nkole, whether you come from uh, Uganda, where you come, I mean, to learn the basics of where you come from. What is it about to teach you about nationalism, mm, patriotic. to love your nation? What is it so about to be patriotic? Mm. Teach, when you say teaching about patriotism and nationalism, you make it, feel, you make it seem like they're teaching about patriotism and not as, as it comes, but the people who are going to Chankwanzi actually claim you have gone nation. there i have been there Not yet. so i i am talking from an evidence as an NRM point of view. Kada. Evid no 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 now wait yes who i am an, i am an president NRM. to be invited to chankwans i think that is one of the first questions we need to you know uh, we have only seen government agencies departments this is how they you invite. know in chankwans secondly if it's called an ideological uh, an ideology clinic or ideological clinic whatever the case is Whose ideology is it that they that are pushing? pushing? Exactly my point. I mean, like, uh, it, it, it's, it's basic knowledge that uh, we know for sure. If I have organized an ideological uh, let me clinic answer. I, I as Olivia Nakalele, it definitely means it's, I, only, I should it's only selfish that I need to be pushing. Why do I need to push the DP ideology? Why do I need to push the general ideology? Remember, I am within my Olivia. time. Let's Olivia, uh, Madam Olivia, to, let me answer you. Now, whose ideology and uh, what is the invitation? I have told you, I have been there. Yes. The invitation is open. It is through advertisement. It is through advertisement that anyone who might need to go there should come and actually go there. So but, I go. Uh, but that yes, is not the catch point. point. Two, that is not the catch point. The, the, the ideology they are pushing, I mean, who should really teach you about loving your own nation? Is it NRM? Do you understand me that loving your nation is loving NRM? Then don't call it an so NRM no. ideological clinic. Call it the National Ideological Clinic. Where someone but, will but definitely now, know but, that but, it is for the nation, no, but, it is for the benefit of every Ugandan, but, 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 Olivia, but once it's spearheaded Olivia, by NRM cadres, then you are already How have we always invited your people at your wedding? What do you put on your card? No, fair enough. No, but, <laughs> but to be fair to Bill Clinton, Chankwazi is actually a national leadership institution. It is, it is not to do with the NRM. The name is not the problem. Then privately owned companies, so privately so owned companies if, would definitely have so if um, an to opportunity to step in there. But the first president is actually, actually given to government <laughs> agencies and departments, then <laughs> it's one thing. No, but you see, these are the guys controlling taxpayers' money. Who else should have priority? The guys who are controlling the taxes that you pay every day should have priority to know that and love that, your country and, and, and love your country means that you should not misuse which kills, the taxes. Which kills there's, there's, the national agenda in all of that. It means like they that. are centering down to a party. Okay, on this We look beneath day, the word uh, and we go to Ms. the Olivia. school that is being spread. Miss Olivia, on this because particular Olivia. Day, do you understand having a person like, uh, uh, a party representative like, uh, 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 
jana unugisha mtu mm. come there he has come there and he has taught us he has come there and addressed us so, it is a national leadership <laughs> i mean doesn't that only show you how neutral or how <laughs> these people need all of us but also to be fair enough to be fair enough may, may, think... may, maybe i need to be very clear you can cite for me that date uh. the time and when he appeared in chapter well, appearing wouldn't be a problem let me let, let me and, I'll be okay. as, as as not only as i don't i don't, I, I, I really don't to, want him to say no, as that we uh, a chance to uh. no but i've seen even the former leader of opposition the honorable beta holo chan yeah. appearing as a guest speaker on the nrm ideological clinic so i think that what Clinton is saying is that this is a broad based yeah, sort of idea. I, I think yeah. that is idea. Re- what is required uh, when uh, Moses yeah. uh, Kidega, our moderator is that there is a need for rebranding of that institute. You mean Chankwanzi? Okay. Yes, the Chankwanzi. Rebranding okay. by name? No, 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 no. By, by branding by what it by practices. Curriculum. By curriculum. By what you know what is the curriculum there? Okay. You know and who is in charge of running the curriculum at Chankwanzi? Mm. that you, you, you know if it is to be open for everybody mm. it's like state house is for the country mm. okay the head of state uh i think we had an, uh, you know a conversation the other day saying okay if young people are called of different political parties let's meet museveni at state house what would be the impression out there mm. and what would be the alternative ideas on where let's say young people would meet president Museveni and discuss and without question of the conscience of where am i so where, you, you, so you, you get where do you want to meet the president from on the streets no 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 No, 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 no. Alongside. No, the no, the the, 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 I, I was very clear mm-hmm. that look, even if we are meeting as young people, we would not select to say set house should be our venue to meet as young people in different political parties. Well, it would be very fine. Who do if, you want to meet? If if the narrative Who do you want to meet? if the narrative <laughs> if you want to meet the head of state, then you'll have to go to state house. No. I saw you led a delegation of young people to to General Mugisha Mutu's uh, office, right? I, I saw NRM youth there, I saw DP youth no, there, right? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, they yeah. were going to meet your party leader. You don't, no, 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 they, they came, they, they came they to your offices. Go, yes, coming But, to my office, yes. they were coming under the Interparty Youth Platform yes. to meet to the Federal Youth League. Uh, you, you wait for when the Nelson meets the president. Yeah. And they wait for when the Nelson meets the president. They met your president at his office, office. but you want that when they no, want to no, meet no, no. the president they should you meet you wait for the lesson that is debating here you wait for the lesson that is debating here and when he meets the president he will say mm. he will not be the same person who has been here and he has never seen the, Birk- the, the, the president you wait for him when he meets the president he's just saying this. <laughs> so what is that the president <laughs> you wait, why are you trying to <laughs> say it now what is the point now, of kilinton that we are talking about kilinton what from the debate point of kilinton from what i've seen i have a name I have a personality mm. protecting the camera Maybe and she wants that you would not desire to listen, meet the president. Listen. What? When you're debating me, mm. debate me, debate me on the point of reference. Mm. Know my character, know, know who I am, know what I stand for before you make conclusions. Mm. Okay? I don't want you to make allegations that No, no, no. no, 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 no I need to know who I am. So so I want to understand what you So don't make allegations there that Nelson I so do I seem to be someone who can be bought out like what? I have a question. So let's let's not misconstrue. Let's have a good debate. Nelson, let's not misconstrue. Let's not mistrue what Comrade Bilton, Bill Clinton is trying to say. All he said that there is a potential of maybe your opinions about the president changing when, when you meet him. Oh, so right. at times, so at times, at times, at times before, 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 before that. we meet a person, we have different perspectives about them. But then when we get to meet them, certain things change about how we perceive them. That is what he was trying to say. Yeah, we, we are, we are it has nothing, it has nothing, it has it has nothing to do with your personality uh, as Nelson. You, you Fair it. enough, right? Yeah. Yes, Shifa. Ah, okay. Now this has changed the course of the discussion, but when he was trying to put it out, when he was trying to put his point across before he finalized, say we wake up tomorrow morning and there is, um, say his picture is on the front page and he has made the president 
but you know that's just at the state house mm. what do you think would be what what do you think would be the impression that the people get mm. from his meeting the president mm. you all know what the impression would be and that is why people try to avoid the state house because that's that's what it has been color does like when mm. you go to be the president you've been bought out and mm. That's what they're trying to avoid. Or even we, the we know it is the state house, but right now you can't go there peacefully okay. because when you uh, go there and you're sitting there, you're done. So there, there, there has well. been a bad narrative. Yeah. Now, between me and you, now let's agree. There are basic issues that we have to agree and push for as young people. Whether we are in NRM, whether we are in movement, Thank I you. mean, uh, whether you know you, uh, you are NT or FDC or DP. Thank you. And the basic issues, are, you know, you sh we shouldn't even yeah, refer. Thank but you. The way you can say that, now, NRM, the National Chang Institute of Leadership Training, Changkwanzi. National Leadership Institute. Yes, National Leadership Institute, Changkwanzi. You know that by practice, it has de degenerated to, to, you know, to be referred as an NRM academy. Have you been there? Uh, okay, I have not. But, 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 but look, then you go. Do you know? Because you are looking at the past. You are looking at the past. You are looking at the past. You are looking You are looking at the past. You are looking at the looking at the past. You are looking at the past. You are looking at the past. You know better about the law of evidence. He who alleges must prove you have never been there. No, but, but, but you're coming up with but, all what these we are discussing fallacious. between me and you. <laughs> no, between me and you. If you went out there, what is the perception of young people? Perception of out of out of ten. what? Uh, no, no, no. They say describe who a young person is. Like who In we Uganda? are. Yeah. Unemployed? Uh, what? Um, Ratchet? No, no, no. Unemployed <laughs> and desperate for to earn a living. Yeah. But yet you're employed and you're yeah. and, and you are, you, you know, but no, there are many. I am a student. I am uh -huh. not you are a student. Employed. Okay, now yeah. we are looking yes, at even, past. You um, see, let us have a good debate, a my problem. brother. Let us have a good debate that mm. there are perceptions mm. that we need not to entertain anymore. You get it, mm. so that we create a new narrative, and a new narrative of if let's say an institute, let's say like a leadership institute of Changkwanzi is a national leadership, you know, institute uh, leadership. Uh, it should be by name, by what it practices, by what curriculum is there. It should have a national character. But it is... Uh, you get it. No, 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 let me no, 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 no. that's, that's what it should be. No, 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 no. Let us understand where this debate... Let us understand where this debate is taking us. We cannot have... We, here, when we are discussing about intergenerational solidarity, Mm. We cannot now think think about parties now, as for now. Mm. In my beginning, or in my introduction, I said solidarity is togetherness. Solidarity mm. is not actually about numbers or what, you, but it is about the realism, mm. what you present on table. The togetherness. Mm. I mean, it should not be, should I run out of kunga? Eh? I have seen these things of the no, <laughs> kunga, kunga, kunga. And I also run in that kakun too, you know, because it is solidarity, because we are fighting for a nation. Should it be that? Good question. Manner, Good question. Let's begin from so, there after the short commercial break. Well, to the viewers, we hope that you are enjoying this episode of the Youth Around Table. One thing I know is you have an opinion. Either you agree with these comrades of ours or you disagree. Let us know on the comment section right below this YouTube channel. Let us know what you think. But above all, just stay glued to this station because we shall be back shortly after this break. <laughs> Nineteen fifty nine, Kwame Nkrumah convened African leaders in Ghana and had this to tell them that seek first the political kingdom and anything else shall fall in place. And that informs why we had to focus on the political question and youth and youth participation in politics, because that is where the conversation begins. But I think um, shall move um, away from that and move towards the economic question. Well, I don't know. The issues of unemployment in this country, the issues of access to, to credit, you know, issues of access to, you know, the, 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 the tax regime, the economic environment. Are young people doing business? I think that's a very big question that we must explore in the next couple of minutes. And um, without um, any particular mode, let me just begin with um, Olivia. Olivia, the economic question, the levels of unemployment continue to haunt this country. You know, the issues around um, uh, entrepreneurship of young people, the business climate, the economic environment, you look at the tax regime and other things. Shouldn't this day have been a day for us to reflect on 
the participation of young people in the economic space, but rather, you know, we are focusing on uh, more social issues. And yet I think yeah, the biggest issue is yeah. an economic question. But also, what, what stocks and gains and opportunities are there for young people in the economic space? Without a doubt, yeah. um, you're really right. And just after politics that enables you uh, secure what belongs to you, the economics come into play to help you stand tall and defend that that you have been given. Because it means you're not going to be compromised in any way, you know, yeah. to fall short of the glory of what you have secured using politics. And I think that is where Kenya takes a lead and I think we need to borrow a leaf from them. The reason as to why they do not have so much confusion when it comes to politics is because mm. when it comes to their economics, mm. you know, I mean for the, uh, sorry to take you back of course a mm. little, but for, for, for issues to do with independence, mm. you know, for issues to do with independence, to stand tall and not to be compromised, you need to be doing well economically mm. because once you have the monies, you are powerful. And I think that is where the you young have to people... Do comment on their debt burden as well? Pardon? On their debt burden? Most definitely. But mm. of course, they stand way taller than us. The mm. fact that their money is even more valuable than mm. us. So mm. even when they stand um, at a higher at a higher rate to do with their debt burden, mm. but if you compute it in terms of what Uganda actually puts out and mm. what it brings in, we are nowhere anywhere near mm. Kenya. But of course, to take it back to what the young people can make of this, um, I think the systems were way, uh, were, were broken way back. Mm. The fact that back then, the biggest economic tool that our parents or that say our grandparents had way back was cooperatives. In other words, for and that is why you see there's generational, there's generational power that is a must from issues to do with economics when you look at families in kenya mm. that come through to lead or that have a say mm. in how the economy performs these are families that have worked through businesses mm. these are families that have stood the test of time when it comes to having and withstanding economic shortfalls when it comes to business and it's still this knowledge is passed on to the young generation. In other words, you'll have, say, Ruto, a renowned businessman, mm. incorporating his child as the brand, as, as the public relations officer mm. of one of his hotels, mm. you know, that, that Kenya boasts of as actually being one of the five-star hotels that they have. Uh, but well, at least her profile to. is yeah. well written on yeah. Twitter, even just that. yesterday when she was, you know, yeah. um, giving congratulatory message, messages to the, to the father. But what am I trying to say is that the stream through which economic empowerment was passed on to the young people, the stream through which our grandfathers passed on the economic mantles to our fathers mm. was broken. And the, in Uganda's context, this was through the cooperatives. Once communities came together, once farmers came together using Uganda's economic backbone as the agricultural sector, once that was broken, once we saw, the, once we saw wealth staying with our grandfathers and this knowledge was not passed on to the young people, mm. that is when the country got it all wrong. And that is why there's been a very huge fight. It's not really visible. But if you look into the intricate details of how the young people perform economically, because I mean, from, from day one, you would move on to, you know, into the garden with your father or with your grandfather. No, the economics at play when it comes to coffee farming, because how much did the country used to reap back um, then when it came to things to do with coffee, cotton, all the cash crops, and once this power was brought together, you'd have families that had names back then. Mm. It was not even from the education that our grandparents had gotten. It was from agriculture. Mm. And it was the biggest economic stronghold that they had back then. But once that was broken, okay. it robbed us, the young people. They oh, did see it back then, mm. but it robbed the young people because the right now I would be mm. manning my dad's coffee company, company. and 
of course that spoke to unemployment yeah. but right now we have nothing left it's not until we realize that mm. and we go back to those roots that the youth would be well equipped mm. not only for, from the government but mm. from their families as from well because a family <clears throat> is the living unit of any generation yeah yeah just like Karl Marx said um uh, Bill Clinton I was coming mm. to actually I mm. see your hand is up but um Bill Clinton today when you look at the biggest economic players in the globe you know the likes of Jack Ma the likes of Jeff Bezos the likes of Mark Zuckerberg and the companies they run Alibaba and uh, you know Binance and all these big companies they are moving towards technology the point here is that the world has moved towards we are actually in the fourth industrial revolution you know we are in the information age whereby uh, actually people have argued and said that today data and internet is going to become the new um, engine it is the new fuel it's it is the new airtime of the economy but you can ask case we have a 12 percent tax on data and an 80 percent tax on VAT still on internet so meaning the cost of accessing internet in Uganda is actually very high do you think Uganda as a country is ready for the digital economy because many young people who you speak for the students at Macquarie University do their businesses online they go to Facebook and post their clothes. They go to WhatsApp and post their their shoes for sale. They use they use Twitter to you know advertise. They are trying to partake of the of the digital economy, but the stampeding taxation. So do you think Uganda as a country is ready to empower and embrace technology as a driving force towards economic empowerment of young people? Now, uh, Mr. Moses, to begin with, if you are complaining about the technology ourselves cannot make. Uh, sometimes I don't understand if you say that the taxes are high. Complain about the electricity. Here ourselves can generate. If the taxes are overwhelming, I just underline the word overwhelming, then you have a right to complain. But uh, So are you saying that but, we uh, shouldn't I, I, mean, focus I mean, no, no, on, we can focus on, on that digital. innovation. On digi we can focus on the uh, innovation of mm -hmm. the digital. Uh, actually, it is very, very paramount. But because how do we use I'm it? Telling you, mm. Why I'm telling you that, Blinken, and hear me out, mm. is that today, the bureaucracy involved with a young person registering his business through URAs mm. is actually mm. very long. Mm. Okay? Even the cost of running a business, having to pay rent and all that, mm. is mm. exorbitant. Right? I understand. So many young people have resorted to running a business on What's their fine? phones. They do business online, and that's how they're surviving. But mm. the same platform is being highly taxed. So we cannot ignore the conversation of us saying that uh, there is need to regulate. Yes, I agree. Government needs money, you know, to to, to fund national development. Okay. I agree with that. But uh, what as, areas are we taxing? As, as as driving my discussion or my take on that, I want to borrow it from what she was discussing, okay. Miss Olivia. Right. So, uh, as young people, not going far away from the theme, I, I you just brought up something that speaks volumes to my heart: solidarity. Mm. Uh, a power, Baganda have a saying, Agari ya wamu, gegaru menyama, right? Mm -hmm. Have I said it so well? Yeah, yeah. Agari ya wamu. So, mm -hmm. that togetherness, that solidarity. Mm -hmm. If us young people can look at the four forms of capital that I know for mm -hmm. myself. Okay. One, we have the erotic capital. Two, we have uh, the technical capital. Three, we have uh, the cultural capital. And the other one is uh, the social capital. Mm -hmm. The erotic capital is physical attractiveness. Someone likes you or they have seen you a beautiful girl. They have given you and you gain from that. The other one taken is you have gone to school. You are a journalist. For example, Miss Olivia. Through that, it gives you a living. Huh? It earns you a living. The other one is the, is the cultural capital, which she was basing on, where you have from the background I come from, you have to, if, they, if your father has 100 cattle, he will live 50 for, with you. From that, you begin a living from there. Mm. Which all these forms? The other is your technical know who, the social capital, the people you have rated with. Who knows you, I mean? From that, you earn. Mm. So you see that in the African, okay, in the Ugandan setting here, mm. we are all blessed with all those forms of capital. Mm. We belong to an institution which is more peaceful to really give you the chance to venture in all those forms of capital. Why? You, will, you can just be appreciated mm -hmm. by how you talk, by how you present yourself. And someone gives you capital or they support you in whatever you are driving. But you see, 
I have an issue with that personally because I have read Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. And Michelle argues that issues around um, racism, issues around um, discrimination can be addressed by merit, by grit. Yes. That if you're good at what you do, if you're a good lecturer, if you're a good computer scientist, the world will look for you. So we cannot, uh, my opinion is that we cannot continue to look at ourselves as, okay, if my father didn't have cows, then I also won't have cows. Mm. Or if maybe my cultural norms, or, 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 or I mean, can we have a society where you can thrive on uh, uh, Mr. Mo, where we, the environment we, we should can not support you. we should not blind ourselves from mm. reality okay. we should not blind ourselves from that is the problem we have other than speaking good english and representing yourself in the most comfortable we should not blind our youths or ourselves and our age and our generation from reality mm. the institution uganda the country uganda Mm. has given you a platform where you can venture in all these different spheres. The okay. little, yes, I am not an economist. I cannot discuss economics to the details. Mm. But the least I know mm. is those forms of capital. It has given you a amount of that. It is very possible you can have 100 or 1,000 cows and no one really troubles you. Mm. You can be a son of Wafamuno and at the end of it all you have the money you can inherit and no one is bothering you. Mm. Please, just this is what they, they, it, has, it has given us. Two, here you can wake up, someone decides you are a beautiful lady. They mm. give you 300 million. No one will come to account or audit you. Mm. You become successful. So, but how about this lady being able to go to school, graduating, the the, the, the and, and the mm. environment actually enables you mean her to, say that it is an, to it apply is for a job mm. and be able to get their own merit. But also, the environment has so many options for her. Uh, now, if you go there, mm. we, shall, we shall just... Because you say that we go to school, remember when we go to school, uh, you, that is the technical capital trying to say, there has not been fair grounds mm. for uh, these people who have qualified and they are not given those positions. That's what you're trying to mean. But uh, for the qualities that we are looking for, we, are, we, we all go to school, but we have different grades. Mm. We have different grades and we have different technical approach on some of the things. Uh, for example, applying for a certain job and you're on an interview, you fail an interview, Please go try something else. Quick question. They don't, don't, don't just say that I have not been given a priority as a youth. You may ask. I have a question. quick question. In my time anyway. Yes, sure. Yes. So you're, you, what you're trying to say is that there is fair ground for the technical capital. Mm. You think of one, you think there is fair ground for the technical uh, capital? Uh, uh, let me answer. There is a fair ground. Why? Because you have to present yourself and what you're bringing on table for you to be given an opportunity. Even if it was in my own company. Yeah. For example, the studio I am sitting at. Look at this beautiful, a beautiful lady. For example, if people came here in, in a room, in a, in, in, in a house that I, 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 I am a CEO to, a lady like this one, she has come and she can hold the camera best. It does not matter about which person, whether huge or Bold, yeah. I may think he can hold a camera better, but she's doing her job so well. So I mean, yeah? not discriminative. Fair enough. I want to bring in Shifa. Shifa. But he's not right. No, that is his opinion. Yeah. You can hold your own. <laughs> well, um, Shifa, let me come to you. The National Resistance Movement, whose policies the country is implementing, ran its most recent campaign on the idea of economic empowerment. And the silver bullet, in their opinion, is the parish development model where you know, it's, it's about access to credit. You know that um, commercial banks or private banks in Uganda give loans at a, around 18% interest. So I think the government of Uganda thought it put in that let's have easy access to credit for young people, you know, soft loans. And I guess that is why the Paris, Paris Development Model came up, a revolving fund, where youth have 30% of this capital. In your own opinion, do you think that, whereas we are discussing youth economic empowerment, do you think the parish development model offers a solution to the young people? It offers a temporary solution. Okay. Because a loan is not a solution for anything. But access to credit. If you have money, then you can put up a business. I if, hear you. If you can put up a business, then I have to you can back. expand. So it is a temporary solution. But even the it's... Sudirs, even these big uh, you know, economic players get loans. Yes, they do. You know, but they get loans. battling a court case regarding a loan. They get loans to add into their businesses that the, the, uh, i think that the, the government should focus a little it was, it was already trying to focus on um employment opportunities okay. but it, it should 
further focus on it. Mm. Then it should put the energy is putting in parish development mode should be put in. I, I, I think, Mr. Rose, you. you need to teach to first when you are posing that question to Madame Shifa, you need to first teach her what the parish model, what the parish development model is, and what it does. So, so you, I know what it is. Right no? From the point of why she's debate, I mean, if she's saying there is a substitute of not giving loan on 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 on, on, on grounds is, of you can. She is it, protected. So. Shifa is protected. You may. Shifa, you're protected. You may, but I, I, just, I, just, I was just thinking that you should know, you need to know what the parish development model is. Oh, no, 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 I can give him no, two I minutes. Know what, sorry, no, please. So no, please. <laughs> Shifa, you're protected <laughs> and you're in your time. Yeah. Yes, parish development model. <laughs> I lost my line of thought. Anywho, mm. I... Um, okay. Um, the, you see, we create on you, and you are making our um, forget their point. Well, but I am um, not forgetting. I, I can am... supplement. No, no. On what I want to bring Shifra in. I want to bring in our comrade see. Nelson. Okay. Nelson has been quiet for some that. time. I'm oh. not okay. <laughs> no. It's a, we, 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 yeah. Nelson, let me come to you. Well, I, I don't know. Some people say I'm too theoretical because I read so many of these books, but I've read Dambisa Moyo's book, Dead Aid. And Ambisa Moyo defines most of these African economies as dual economies, dual D-U-A-L. Mm. And she argues that um, the poverty gap between the old and the young is very wide. The old, who constitute about maybe, well, maybe 10% of the population, control the factors of production. They have the land, they have the capital, they can uh, pay the labor. I mean, they have everything. The young people who are on the other side have no access to any factor of production, right? The most that they can participate in the economy is as laborers, working kitukidogo and getting paid, you know. So, and I think that also speaks to the economic situation that their reign is in Uganda. So, the question I would pose to you is that, um, do you think that the young people's um, lagging back in the economic spheres, so sorry, in the, yes, in, in the economic spheres, has a role to do with whether Uganda is moving towards a capitalistic economy or whether we are a quasi-capitalistic, uh, we have certain tendencies of, com of, of communism, you know, but also we are moving towards the capitalism. So do you think that the world views of whether we are a communist country or a capitalistic country has played a role in, in making the gap wide between the rich and the poor? Or it is purely on, on internal factors? Interesting. Uh... Just to be open about that is uh, you when you're talking about the economic development, mm. you know, of the country, you cannot discuss it in, the, in, in isolation, isolation with true. good governance. Okay. And I just want to be, you know, specific. So you're saying that the economy that is growing because the, of You know, the economy, governance. the high rates of unemployment, um, you know, I saw the other day claiming that we had moved to a middle yeah. income status, which is a, you know, a quite controversial point uh, out there. It is cause a question of government. But maybe according to the parameters, <laughs> we actually are. But, but that's... Why should we continue to follow what World Bank is telling us, what IMF is telling us? Are in those aspects of new when, when we have a number of people who hardly, in the country who had even see a dollar, you know, in a week. Oh my! Yes, maybe you be, you you know he just Speaking said that he, 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 he said that a hundred cows. I don't know how many people have a hundred <laughs> cows in your village. If you have yeah, lack fair. enough, okay. How many Godwin move or Avamunos we have in this country? Yeah. If uh, probably you you belong to that class, no, what I'm saying, I am here. I am here. Yes, I am here. Nelson, to be fair enough, to what I'm saying yes. is that maybe African countries must begin to define their own modes of economic development. The World Bank continues to put out the parameters you must use to define middle income or maybe developed country mm, or whatever mm. it is. The IMF continues to tell us all those things. But people, so, people have argued so, that these are neo-colonialism tendencies. Fine, fine, fine. So, you know, they say, we, we look at facts. <laughs> so the we other can, day, we, can we, 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 we didn't, we did, we didn't have money to, to hold the youth conference. Uh -huh. I mean the youth, uh, youth day. Uh, youth day. Uh -huh. yeah, we didn't have money. We saw the Minister of Finance 
telling the country that look there is no money in the treasury mm. Huh? Mm. and uh, you, you are talking yeah, let us not uh, be basic in, 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 in some issue. let us confront them with confidence mm. the challenge we have had as young people mm. we think that if you have if you have a fact you have research speak it mm -hmm. no matter what it is that's mm. what we need to be you know having the 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 the, the, the mindset of fear to mm. speak the truth and you're defending the indefendable will not take us anywhere do we are in our generation and we have to keep at it now let's come you when you're talking of <laughs> increased rates of unemployment mm. of course when there is a no un uh, unemployment you are economically disempowered mm. as a young person okay mm. uh, what brings that who accesses that employment that is available mm. let's assume is he that uh, is he is he or she one that deserves that uh, job or it is the taken kono who he was talking about is it on merit do we have merit play you know in the in the in the, in the public spaces I of the, but i was categorizing all those I into an, different I forms of an how we have we accept this an indictment on the public service commission no no no, no. In, in all in all spaces the government uh, uh parasitos to get a job there now it's about who you know really? who you are yes i can <laughs> tell you 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 people are out there have moved to offices someone has good grades but they're not considered on merit let us not assume maybe i'm, I'm are, not, are, not, are, you, are you from uh, uganda uh, or you are from i am in uganda a different yes. country. i am in uganda but what i tell disagree you, we have, that we have had bad practices of governance mm. that has seemed to put the country into a, a group of individuals the privileged few that have to benefit so the moment us the, the, the you know the, the unprivileged uh, the unemployed because of factors that has been perpetrated by government we come out they say ah maybe you don't know where you are you don't know where you belong we belong we, uganda uganda is for all ugandans <laughs> All jobs are there to be competed for in a fair and equitable manner. But now, where if, you you having, if you say that, you are having, having, but if you say that as a honorable member of, of from from Isinjo, I give a priority to to be for someone to be my personal assistant to an opposer or someone for, for Christ's sake. You said that no, I have no idea what kind of now, now, for me. For me, no, no, no. I, I am not debating with you. No, no, no. I'm debating with the viewers. No, no, no. no, no. The 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 yes, yes, yes. The 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 but let the viewers or let let them hold an opinion in what I'm saying. The they will mm. judge me wrong or right. Mm. Believe me, there is. But so you're much directing of, the you are directing the youth to a wrong direction. No, there is so much of nepotism that has been practiced here. That it is who you know is close to you that we have to get that job. Believe me or not, but also understand that uh, now you're talking about the Polish uh, so, no, government no, model. But no, that is no, a no, that is not a question. And, 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 and when you're talking about, also, part, you are saying there is much money for access credit, use for access credit. No, use where is that money? Seventeen million that they gave. A parish has how many people? Nelson. No, that's and how is it shared? You, what is that? You what is that? You what you what is that? That's that that very traditional. You spoke about that. In Africa, it is very traditional. That's very right? traditional. That that you have to consider you those people the, first. Yes. The 17 million was in the last quarter. Uh -huh. This quarter, the money is yet to be released. Yes, how much? But the 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 anticipation is of 100 million. Yeah. Okay. But also, I wanted to put you a honest question. If you are CEO see of a company. And uh, you, um, you had a brother who deserved the job that have gone to school. Would you give it to? Would, who, would you rather have it someone else take the job? No, they it are is both qualified. Merit. Exactly, they are both qualified. They are both. But then you have a brother. No, no but so that you have to have credibility in place mm -hmm. to, you know, to say if there are interviews, whoever takes it takes it on that basis. You are the last decision maker. Now you are the last decision maker. No, I go by what has been presented. They are saying they are all good. They are all you good. Choose. You choose. You out of the cream, there is always the cream. No, no. no. They are saying that equal is good. So you choose. That's what we are saying. We hide ourselves. The reality. Let's, 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 the reality. Let's, 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 so let's would agree. you would you give the job to let, someone? Let, else? Let's agree. If that person has credibly a uh, good credentials than the person I'm related to. Okay. Why would I take the reality? The question is now that it has come. It has the job. It has come. You cannot tell me that data. The pass marker is fifty. They are all on fifty. No, no, no. It's not possible for them to get fifty. But the other, the, you see, even if you got a tie, 
And they're saying, 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 Thank you. you don't. Let us not validate the issue of nepotism. There are many young people out there who are having good grades, who are credible, who has good credentials than people that they know they have went, you know, gone on a panel, done so well, but have not got the job. Mm. Reason? Cause of corruption. Reason? Cause of nepotism. Mm. Reason? Of so many factors. Yeah. That if they were not in place, if we had good systems of government, that that person will get that job on merit. Okay. If we want to sit here and validate nepotism, uh, validate, uh, you know, corruption. Nelson, Nelson. 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 what do you do? Under 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 I say it. Under I made reference to Michelle Obama's book. That the issues around discrimination, the issues around nepotism. That is already in account race like can, should, can be addressed by merit and greed, right? So I, substan I substantiate your argument by saying that we must front merit above everything else Simple. okay but um yes shifa you have your hand is up yes mm. um you three were having the discussion uh based on an outlier you were discussing when people when he's talking about nepotism he's talking about the entire country and system the institutions of the country not personal companies like you are stating see if it's your company you can do as you please then you have to use merit but if you're talking about public offices and everything it's, it's not supposed to be nepotism you have to pick merit you understand what I'm saying? But this is, these are public offices. There are so many. And now the population is so huge that... Let's not validate yeah. wrong yeah. idea. Yeah. I cannot accept yeah. that. <laughs> if you, you want to go, come and say, you validate, I will, uh, you, you'll go in an office, no, no, no. you employ your father, you employ your mother, yeah. you employ your sister. This is not your personal you, campaign. This, it is government. A public <laughs> office. Fair Compete you should be you should you know me a public office that really has behaved in that way. No, me. so 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 you so you validate the national is just say to don't validate to wrong don't validate to wrong you see what I found with such a generation you see don't validate to go on and discuss that area is the public office where the father, mother, child or uncle they have continuously been employed in that office. Just say it in front of those cameras. Nowhere, absolutely nowhere. In been, my discussion, I don't care. As a whole, no, 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 as a culture we have here, mm. should it be nepotism is what we from. No, 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 no. Okay. We also try, but this is a tradition. Mm. This is a tradition. We need to break the video. <laughs> 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 it can be a because it favors you. That is oh, race. Oh, please. No. Colleagues. Why do I don't, don't, I don't no, know? No, because you seem to defend it as if it favors you. It is Colleagues. what you practice. Colleagues. You may practice something for years. No. Colleagues. 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 No, no, no. Colleagues. You may practice something Nelson. for 36 years, Nelson. but because of bad governance, Nelson. time will come when it shall be. No. It should be put on record that Mr. Nelson, Nelson, in the entire conversation, yes, in the entire conversation, he is talking out of no evidence. Bill Clinton, can, that I, should be in can the I moderate body. the conversation? Go on, Mr. Moderate. Thank you. Well, <laughs> my, I think that debate should be summed up with the opinion that I think merit should stand tall about yes. everything else. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, regardless. Yes. Well, um, Olivia, let me come to you. We are speaking about the economy. We are speaking about unemployment. We are speaking about access to opportunities. Many have hinged and said that um, uh, the misgiving of Uganda's unemployment question is hinged on our education system and curriculum that we are still stuck to the colonial education system where that teaches you to be you know um a desk sitter to go to an office and wear a white collar and wear a tie and can sit on an office but i think the world has moved away from that you know there are so many means through which people can actually make money and be employed there is self-employment there is entrepreneurship so do you hold do you hold the same opinion that our education system has led us to where we are today. It is more theoretical. It is not giving our young people hands-on skills 
And therefore, if they fail to find jobs, it is actually on them because the system just does not train them in the proper way. So your opinion about the education system vis-a-vis -vis unemployment? Um, I'd, I think it's a 50-50 situation or a 60-40 situation. Why am I saying that? It, it's no doubt mm. that our education system, our curriculum, well, um, forgiving the fact that it ha we've received a few amendments here mm. and there in the curriculum, I think that is being used from S1 to S4. Yeah. Well, yeah. at least from the stories that we have covered. Yes, yes, there's a new But curriculum. also, mm. even when you look at the nursery section, the way we were taught yes. is not the way they are being taught. Mm. I'm told they even have sounds and, yeah. you know, yes. we're not taught all of these things. So mm. that only serves to show you that it was, it is extremely outdated, but mm. um, some elements in government are cognizant of that fact and mm. are making a few twitches here and there. Mm. And um, the fact that this is what our forefathers relied on to make sure that they attain um, employment, say engineers, lawyers, yeah. um, you know, all these white collar jobs. It, it definitely speaks to the high levels of unemployment. And well, many thanks go to the Ministry of Education for coming up uh, with uh, the few changes that they have made Although that is just like a stone's throw in the sea, there's no significant change until certain things are outlined and, you know, streamlined to make sure that our education system fits the fast paced changing environment as we see it now. Um, it, it's so unfortunate that Uganda is very good at drafting policies and laws mm. that are actually stolen mm. by other countries, mm -hmm. um, like Rwanda. But we fall short on implementation. You fall, yeah. we, we fall short, sorry. Mm. We, we fall short of implementation. And it still goes back to the broken systems in government. Mm. For example, while my colleagues were deliberating, um, when you if you have a generation of 70-year-olds who can hardly use an iPad on the floor of parliament, drafting an ICT mm. policy mm. 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 when they can hardly use an iPad, mm. then what are they deliberating? Mm. I'd rather have them on the, four, on the foreseeing side of it, but letting young people take up 80% of that, of that space. Mm. 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 To make sure that they have the young people's input because they understand this um, system better. Boy, yeah. they, they understand ICT better. Mm. If well, that's the road that government has chosen, you know, to make sure that they create employment for young people. The systems are broken. So that is just mm. in, mm. you know, policy drafting. Uh, let's, uh, the fact that ICT has changed a lot in our mm. society, let's go back, say, to some of the critical things that are responsible for the, num the big numbers of young people remaining unemployed whereas we cry and say that our education system um, has not given us the skill mm. let's look at the policy that enables internship opportunities okay. mm. that actually mm. would enable a young person get hands-on experience you know to make sure that when they go out there they have the necessary skill yeah. how many companies mm. are able to suck in yeah. the big numbers of young people to yeah. do internship. I think it's a good question on policy. Yeah. So. No, uh, okay. Just, just in a minute. It's well. It's well. No. You, just make the point. Oh. Your, yeah. Con your concluding well, point. Well, the there's a number of points that mm. I noted that are largely responsible for the. So while you're crying that we need, um, they're called. I think they're called technical institutions. Mm. Vocational. But training. yeah, vocational institutions. While you're blaming a young person for not having gotten the necessary skill, skill. you as government, mm. have you enabled, have you tasked, have you put in, in place, well, a policy yeah. that tasks every government agency, department, to make sure that they, so they bring in about 50 intern. interns. Mm. Say, so for example, if it's... If it's um, but we know that there's a policy, a policy rather, on entry-level jobs. 
But, True, but, but that uh, is entry level yeah. jobs. It's not necessarily internship. internship. Okay. Because with internship, I mean my second year, I was in my third year, I had to do internship before I moved on to fourth oh, year okay. because it is it is required at the university. But is it in tandem with what mm. government? Because the fact that I am coming from a government institution, mm. Maka University, mm. it, it means there has to be a synergy between the government agencies and departments out there to make sure that they effect mm. what this government academic institution mm. is putting on ground. So if M Mulago cannot take in over the over 1,000, okay, if Mulago, Mbarara, Gulu, Hospital, which other government I hospital? Think, yeah, if they cannot yeah, suck in yeah. the number of doctors being nurtured at university to do internship, they're not even paying them. It is internship. Then I just hope where qualify. do you think these young people? I, I just hope you qualify. No, no. First, hold up, no. mm. I hope you qualify your argument by saying that um, why can't these public institutions, um, you know, have input from all universities? And not there has just, to be a policy, and, and, and not just public. There has to be a policy enabling that, then, whether it's government or private. Otherwise, you'll be discriminating on the private institution. I'm just juxtaposing, okay. like what we have on ground vis-a-vis yeah. -vis what is actually, you know, being said. Okay, fair enough. Thank but you, also, Nelson. now that is just Antibu internship. Antibu Nelson, you're giving I'm, 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 <laughs> Nelson was from speaking. I'm finishing yeah, up I just a few that. points that are responsible for the high okay. level, you know, unemployment. <laughs> so we don't have an internship policy, or oh. if we if we do have it. I've not heard of it. It's right. it's it's not working. There is. But also, let, let's check the retirement age. Let's check the retirement age. Mm -hmm. Whereas we know for sure um the retirement age, I think it's about 60, 55, 55, 60. Not mm. sure if it was amended. How many when we check our <laughs> we usually first refer to government because it is the best example. Mm. They need to be exemplary. And yeah. that is why opposition comes in to check them. Mm. If we are to check government systems, if we are to check government agencies and departments, how many employees are there assuming all these positions, yet they need to have retired by then? Like by yeah. 55, by 60. Think, uh, you find Olivia. someone is 70 and they are sitting on a board of governors mm. for different inst government institutions, mm. like 10 of them. Yeah. So where you have not created space for young people to assume this. Mm. First, you have not created internship opportunities for them. Mm. Secondly, the job entry policy or whatever is discriminatory. Mm. Third, you are not effecting the retirement age policy. Mm. Where do you expect these young people to get jobs in government? But you see, last but not Olivia, least, Olivia, last but not least, government only has what six six thousand jobs. Do you know how much? Do you know how much six thousand jobs? You know what difference? Do you know what difference the six thousand jobs would create? Those with, are just with, with, that, with the that number of a number of graduates with, with the in number of no, yes that is, that, just in a single that is, that is which is okay a, <laughs> which is okay i think that we now, should we should shift the number of things i mean it is i mean it is i mean it is because we need to grow the economy if we have one now the moment that we don't want the economy to be okay let me make let me let me make let me make my my last point okay but we you are stating that figure not putting into consideration some of the new government agencies actually that are being created day in and day out. Even if that's still so, very um, Last but not least, we do not have a checking system mm. to check all these gaps so that they are filled. We don't have it. And that is why we shall continue grappling with unemployment amongst the young people. But also... In one minute, Olivia. The payment system. I mean, Uganda is the one country where for 10 years they continue paying ghost employees. And whereas you're making a claim that, you know, we have only 6,000 jobs that, <laughs> that, that government provides. Uh. But you continue paying. In other words, these employees are even non-existent. I mean, we just did a story last week in, I think it was Busia, where government has continued to pay over 1,000 teachers. Mm. But they're not even existent. Okay. You have gone into so, the so, 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 to teach. Bill Clinton, I'll, I'll bring you after mm. Nelson. Nelson. You have just... gone into protests and you want to... <laughs> we can hire others. Nelson, the constitution yeah. puts it right that Nelson. when you are disgruntled, you mm. can hold a peaceful protest. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a constitutional it is never peaceful. mandate. Thank, Thank you. you. Nelson, let me come to you. Um, we are speaking about young people's economic empowerment. 
But take it or leave it. The biggest player in all this is the government of Uganda. One, because of the social contract theory that the people have with their government. But two, because of the overarching <clears throat> coercive tools that the government has in their possession. Now, let's pick some policy here. Uh, people have argued that Uganda's economic policy is actually outward looking. You know, it favors, you know, the foreign direct investors at the expense of the domestic investors. No doubt about that. Yeah, because if we are to address young people's empowerment, then we must address the economy in general mm. from policy and things like that. I'll take you back to uh, USA. In 1938, they introduced the smooth holy tariff. And the idea on this law was that how can we increase tariff on foreign commodities, but at the same time, incentivize the domestic players. Very and that true. is how today we have these very big companies in the USA, the Wall Street companies that we talk about. But Uganda's strategy seems to be the inverse. You true. Know, we attract, yes, foreign investors. Tax but, holidays. Yeah. But tax holidays are never given to our local investors. Exactly. So the question around policy that I want to put to you is that as an alternative government or as a government in waiting as it used to call it or as an opposition political party <clears throat> what would you propose as an economic strategy to address the the, the the challenges we have with our economy i think generally because that's a general economic uh, question yes it is uh, whether you know for young people or for you yes know, for all. uh look i think i would say that uh, government this regime has has always had the best diagnosis Mm. Yeah, they make it the best diagnosis, yeah. but the prescription, mm. they say, they diagnose malaria, but they give paracetam for headache instead of the one of malaria. Mm. So it is known, you know, that uh, that's how they have always played. Look, we need to look at what is our, if we wanted to grow the economy, what would be your first priority as the country of Uganda? Mm. Our thinking is agriculture is our capital base mm -hmm. as a country. Mm -hmm. How do you now improve? Do you have an agricultural bank, for example, mm -hmm. okay, uh, that is put? Do you have a policy to say, let us establish an agricultural bank that will be able to ensure that there is a high quality inputs, there is a easy uh, access at credit that is at low rates, specifically for uh, commercial farming. Broaden that space. The moment you broaden it, look, jobs uh, and employment. Has not the NRM actually done so? I with think, Operation Wealth Creation. No, with Operation with NADS. No, with NADS, you know, you will know we, we know the results of NADS, the Tandiqua, all of those things fail. The failed project. You get it. Those are failed projects. Why? That's why now they are, why? they are bringing. No results, why? They, they are because of high levels of corruption in government. Okay. Now, and also poor mapping strategies because you lack research. God should forgive you. You, you get it. <laughs> yes, I was I speak for Uganda. Anyway. For so, those the wrong facts. Now, you, you need to know on, your own yeah, on my own behalf. Yeah. So, and it's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Look, like a country, I will just tell you, we did the zoning. You have all moved on the streets. Uh, I mean, let's say in uh, uh, Ruero, mm -hmm. where you're having a gardener with about 10 pineapples and is telling you, help me and take these ones at 5,000. At hey, least, yes. It's okay. You get it? Like, he's is, is, is having, but how much money inputs cost? has he or she put to produce that one uh you know pineapple and what is the value of that pineapple to the person that is buying it yeah. we need to create they, you know they are creating industrial parks everywhere elsewhere the agricultural industrial parks they should be put in well uh, you know well position um in different regions but also you shouldn't put them there and you fail to empower the very social, the very region with what is supposed to give. You had uh, a food processing factory in uh, in in in, in, in Tororo or Soroti? Soroti. Soroti. Uh -huh. How, what what has government made put in place for people of Soroti to ensure that they continue to grow as much mangoes to have the market of the mangoes and also the quality of the mangoes? If you go to the north, you will find that you have so much of the of the lemon and, and uh, you know all the, what have you the the sunflower. What have you done? So, with the moment you have that kind of agricultural bank into place, but also look, increase, uh, improve on the qualities of other of other sectors, health, because you know that health 
between me and you that each and every family spends on health. Mm. That money would be used for some other things. Improve on education, research. Let us not have basic people, you know, uh, you know, to trying to, to to put the economies together when they have they they have less research. They don't have facts. They make good, you know, they they they, they make good analysis of the problem, but because of poor research, they make wrong, you know, uh, prescription. I will tell you, like a country like Israel, we did the zoning. And uh, but the zoning, why did we even spend that much money of research to do the zoning that we did not even implement? Where we say, okay, the 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 railroad triangle corridor is good, best for fruits. Mm -hmm. What have we done? Do we have a factory in Wero for, for for pineapples? Do if we say cocoa, so, huh? I, I, like, like like cocoa in mm -hmm. uh, in the Rwenzori region, mm -hmm. do we? Ha what have we done to ensure that the people in the Renzo region are fully empowered mm. to, to, you know, to have high output of the cocoa mm. on the market and to have it on the high global demand? Yeah. Coffee, you know, the so, robust and so what have we done? In a, nutshell, in a nutshell, you're saying that we need to, government needs to be more intentional around mapping and being more um, intention driven. Intention Understand the needs of a, of a group, of, group of people and empower them in that sector. Uh, Fair enough. You, you Fair saw enough. the, just, just, just a moment. Mm. You saw the Operation Wealth Creation. Yes. They used to come, now we say, we are giving, uh, they were giving what? They are giving uh, cows, they are giving goats, they are giving pigs. To They are saying, B, have a group of 15, but the 15 people, one has never even, you know, probably had cows. This one is based in rabbit. But you're telling them do this together. Someone, what if you say, okay, uh, bricklayers, mm -hmm. have your association come receive the fund through now, this now kind of talking. But now, model. Now but, you're talking. But Emioga has those associations. Now Emioga has has border border associations. Um, you know, hair hair dryers association. Stop, stop educating this man on that, so on, 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 on a show. See, Stop it, the, the, the entire things that you're talking about, the Mioga. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. why now have we gone ahead to for fire? Because the Mioga was an urban based idea for the for, for Ugandans in the urban centers, in the cities and the municipalities. The parish development model is for the Ugandans at the lowest administ administ administrative level of the parish. Even so as it is, even, 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 even as it is right now. But it's all about if, access if, to if, credit. Even if, we, even if we are talking about parish development model. Whether you talk about the hundred million, you know, a hundred million in a in a sector like you know in that, we need to think of how much money would be, you know, okay, fair enough. Needed to, bring to, in. To, to, to push that sector. Thank you. I want to bring in Bill Clinton. We Bill. cannot do that with uh, with such kind of policies. <laughs> Good with argument. Such kind of, no. Good argument. No. Bill Clinton, I want to bring you in at this point. Um, he mentions that we need to you know boost agriculture. We need to produce mangoes, produce whatever it is, right? But these products need a market, okay? Otherwise, then the surplus, you know, we, we cannot yield much economic returns from surplus commodities if you don't sell them. The East African Federation, I want to just uh, pick your mind on that. Mm. Um, do you think it offers a sustainable solution towards issues around access to market? Because if we are to produce as many cows, sorry, as, uh, as much milk as possible or eggs, we must find someone to sell them to. Okay, but also the aspect that, you know, the, the, the free movement of labor and things like um, the, the non-tariff barriers, the non-tariff customs rather. Do you think that the East African Federation, whereas we are discussing the broad question of youth economic empowerment, do you think there is an answer for young people in the bigger federation of East Africa? Mm. Uh, to begin with, um... F from from how we are driving this debate is uh, or dialogue is to do a blame game. Uh, in the beginning, I just don't want us to go far away from the theme where it involves all of us, the youths. Whereby what can we use with this technology that we are given? Whereby what can we use these initiatives that the, even the government can put in place? By what can we use by these other, anything that can come up for a certain entity. Talk about, you're talking about the Mioga. That is what the government has given us. You are talking, uh, let, let me go to the internet we are using. We have really uh, skipped the, 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 the... Which is highly tax. Look at this, look at it. We have really not respected the norms. We have, we have really, we cannot use internet so well in mm. Uganda. 
That is why maybe you we have not ventured so that, in, in, in a generation that can more? embrace in, 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 a, in a generation that can embrace what internet is capable of. Is that why they, they, they say the what, in this debate in this debate when we yeah. are addressing a certain generation or a certain population of people we should educate them within I, I cannot discuss what the nation or what the government should be doing now mm. it is within the heavy duty of mm. me what i can say is that what identifying those barriers that we have within us the barriers that we have what do we use internet for if we are given free uh, rights or access to every kind of i mean what do we use it for so you're saying to, young people are misusing internet absolutely internet. absolutely mm. absolutely these people are wasting it they are doing a lot of bad things with internet mm -hmm. another thing two a lot i said a lot and good things are few what outweighs what three i i said a lot of bad things and little good things mm. so two if we are given such uh, entities have come we have seen people are greedy we have a tendency of greedy and selfish youths mm. we are grooming such a generation within ourselves i might not say that other people seated here some of you have those characters but i am telling you for purposes of helping the people watching you one you should understand that among us we have greedy people already who have interest that by the time noga comes onya onya white it all is looking for where he is getting two you cannot sit on this panel and you're not addressing the problem of laziness that we have among us that if you are trusted with a certain office Remember these are 600 people the things that you are complaining should that means should really be uh, employ or help you with but that is just a number that can graduate in a single institution now readiness and laziness are you ready that is a question we cannot teach the people watching you are you ready for a certain opportunity are you prepared enough oh we have seen a generation whereby you can be here you can happen we are so happy people in Uganda that one we should confess that even it, you go extreme and you forget that you have a, 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 an obligation to fulfill the next day so within these things before we go to what miracles and wonders the government can do for you mm. before we discuss uh, what your father or mother can leave you with before we the question is are you ready okay your comment on the east african federation now my comment on the east african federation where we have the east african common market mm. i think uh, when we have the products that can compete with the market when our milk is more when our milk that we produce here or when our coffee we produce here when we are when, when when the bananas we produce here uh are, are trend with the market with, with what is required because i know that 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 there are those uh, guidelines there are those uh, protocols should i call them mm. that that you have to really no. uh, pro, you have the standards the standards, anyway, the yeah. standards mm. that you have to really pull out mm. for you to be on the market so i think uh, we are still as a, a growing country mm. we are still uh, progressing we mm. are progressing mm. that is why you see our milk on the dubai uh, fashion uh, on the dubai expo mm -hmm. uh, Really, our milk did so. Well. Maybe you need we did so well. The one which was yeah. on the floor, our right? Coffee, we yeah. did so well. The one which was on the floor. No, no, no. We did so well. I mean, please, I, I am within my time. You will just, you will just be given your time to discuss. Two. So we are progressing. Yes. We are progressing. We cannot say that we are so bad off. Yes. Our coffee is now going somewhere. Mm. So within the East African Community Federation, we just have, we should just learn. I have not seen this. We have a problem. The last time I was in Kenya, the last time I was traveling to Tanzania. Mm. I remember we had a lot of hardships mm. on the border a mm. lot a lot a lot mm. traffic disturbed us so much mm. then i was like it is very easier for us we are so generous enough mm. easier for them to get here mm. easier for them to do what they can do here mm. but uh, within the borders we mm. still have that integration of our we feel superior or for what we so, so meaning the, the point is that we must strengthen the east african federation yes because it has a solution underlying somehow oh my it has issues around free labor movement issues around access to market of commodities Very good. and all those things Very good. so we must push for the ESC federation yeah. Absolutely. perfect perfect and we have if we have that at at, mm. at our control and in in our hands we are good to go both market 
I don't want is to go to political, political will. Will. But it is already no, existent. No, no, but still will. Ugandan milk, it, Ugandan no, grain no, keeps no, no, being no, no, pushed no, no, out no, no, of the Kenyan market. It's still no, no, already no. there. Is that the because they, they think the only thing we have thing. now it is only the customs. They, they think it's the, uh, 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 Yakima, yeah. the East African, uh, uh, you know, customs uh, uh, is the, where we have the one stock border. Other things have been frustrated because of the greed of, 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 of some of the leaders. That is true, but there is some yes. progress. But, yeah, but, but, but there is some progress. Yeah, the progress. How many the countries are in the East African? I have seen yeah. a country. Yeah. 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 But why is it that it's only Ugandan products that are? Rwanda believes it can have the best. We don't have free movement of labor. If you want to see the all these growers, the Rwandans, the Rwandans, what it is a one-stop border. I mean, that is enough to embrace what you are good at and what you have to come from. We have to we have to start from somewhere. We have to move to Kenya. I agree. We, to we are already somewhere. integrated, yeah. Moses. We, we are already somewhere. integrated. But amongst Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, Sudan, why is it that it's only the Ugandan milk that is pushed out of the Kenyan market? Who, who else has milk? That is who a very big question. Who else has milk? Why is it that it's only the Ugandan grain that has aflatoxins in it? That's a very big question that needs Wait, to be answered. Think, think, so are, it means there are things as addition. a country that yeah. means yeah. it means there are things yeah. other, as mm. a country that we are not doing right addition, that need like that. to be addressed. Let's not think that everything is actually okay. Yeah, I think the one thing that government yeah. needs to own up to is that there are things that are going wrong mm. and they need to be addressed. Simple yeah, as fair that. enough, guys. I want to conclude with Shifa. Our time is fast spent. Okay. Um, well, we have explored so much of the political question. We have discussed uh, the economy. And clearly our time is fast spent. We shall just spare the next maybe five minutes to talk about the social aspect and uh, where we have to fall in the social, uh, maybe cultural norms or uh, dispensation of this country. And just um, to do this, I'll just bring in Shifa. Shifa, um, in the wake of COVID-19, we saw that the issues around teenage pregnancies, issues around early marriages of so many of these young girls rose up, you know. The, the facts were, were clear. Uh, in the wake of commemorating International Youth Day, do you think that there is need for us as a country to reflect on the unique needs of these young mothers who have gotten pregnant during this, well, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the early marriages? Do, do you think that we need to move towards maybe having more stringent laws that bar maybe, um, uh, you know, early marriages? So, your comment around that. Uh, okay. So um, I believe we are all on Twitter and there was a video that was circulating, I think, a week back or yeah. done of the young girl that was being yeah. put on a border board and then tried yeah. from, to... From, from, from so, mm. yeah. She was how old, 16? Mm. Okay. 14. 13. 14. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And in the comment section, the divide, the poor are saying, I don't know, it's their culture. They have, they've been doing it for years and you know they can continue doing that. And of course, there are those people that are saying, but the government should intervene. So... The whole country is still divided. Mm. There are the, 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 the people that want to proceed and put the stringent mm. rules against you know, early marriages yeah. and what will lead to teenage pregnancies and everything. And there are those mm. that are still okay with the culture. Mm. And you know, it's their right. They've been doing it for life and they can continue doing it because you know, they've been doing it. Mm. I, I think we need to shift our... We need to change the narrative. Yeah. Because the worlds are changing. I mean, earlier it was okay. The girls were not going to school, but I mean, the girl was in senior too. And yeah. Now she has been, t she has been married off and stuff. Yeah. Well, my comment is, of course, it's wrong. Yeah. I, I, I do not agree with whatever is happening with making the girls get married at such an early age. And for the teenage pregnancies during COVID. Mm. Um, oh yeah, there was a. It was a bulge in yeah. the teenage pregnancies. I mean, like. For how many? Okay, they say twenty-five percent of the teenagers yeah, got kids. Yeah. Yes, and um, the, this hindered their their entire their entire life. Their education. Yes, they can they can't go back to school. They are they are looked at differently in society. I mean, yeah. economically everything. So um, to to give a solution, of course, COVID was unpredicted, and whatever happened happened because of the redundancy of the parents, the government and everyone. But to make this, to stop this from happening in future, I think we need to put, uh, we need to give better sex, sex education. Okay. Yes, and to provide um, the... Reproductive health. Reproductive maybe. health. 
Uh, okay, for example, the girls being taught about what they can use not to get pregnant. Oh. You know, if they feel like they can't ab- abstain because, well, yeah, they, 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 they need to be introduced to these things and this is to be cheaper. Yeah. Because I, I know they give out the postina and all that drama yeah. and it's, so sometimes they do, but then if it is sold, it is too expensive. Yeah. 10,000 and not very many people can afford 10,000. That's right. Yes. So uh, these things need to be, they need to be taught and made cheaper. And they, the, so they also need to teach everyone not to... Ah, I'm sure you're getting into it. You need to know that you have to be a good person. You understand? You go to a, you go to a clinic and the girl just can't say she wants to post it. You know, she was raped yeah. last night or whatever. And she just can't say it openly because in yeah. society and... Yeah. So we, we need to shift stigma, right? Yeah. We need to well, shift the narrative. Yeah. Can I supplement on what... Fena. Okay, just, just in said, a minute. In just a few. Um, I feel like civil society really had an yeah. upper hand in addressing most of the most of the issues surrounding early teenage pregnancies and marriages way back in the when the country was had hit by the COVID nineteen pandemic. But we also remember at the time when the country was registering a certain level of recovery in that regard, yeah. government came up to slap a ban on most of the civil society organizations, of course, that were also receiving um, funding from DGF, DGF. which yeah. really saw de- deterioration in some of the efforts that were actually made to save these young girls. But that aside, I have not seen a concrete response uh, response mechanism from government to make sure that one, perpetrators of this vice, you know, are brought to book and yeah. given satisfactory satisfactory punishment or the current punishment which in my opinion gives a a picture of mixed feelings Mm -hmm. how i wish government actually worked better whereas um you know the ban was lifted Mm -hmm. how i wish government now comes up with a more responsive plan to make sure that we resurrect the Mm -hmm. the dead souls in Mm -hmm. that regard because Mm -hmm. many of you know, those children's futures went down the drain. Yeah. So how I wish government would now work on a more collaborative, you know, approach with, with civil society, you know, in providing sanitary towels to some of the girls. Counseling. You know, counseling services, you know, extending family planning. Yeah. Now, of course, when I say family planning, many people are going to rub me the wrong way, but also mm. abstinence is mm. family planning, mm-hmm. you know, but only that people you know, only sent out on condom use, yeah. in, in injectables. Mm. But how I wish government, you know, came up with a more responsive plan to make sure that, one, we have deterrent measures mm. for these satanic elements yeah. in the society. Yeah, I think, so, yeah, I, I, I think <clears throat> government, through the courts of law, have actually uh, been very intentional. As a lawyer, you know the Bruno Chihuahua case that said that Yes, cultures are okay and they should be practiced, but, yeah, but you so know that the case of... Not um, even very far, the, the, the Mifumi case. The, yes, uh, Mifumi, FGM. one and two, yes, FGM you know, case of... The, um, the FGM that was being practiced. Whereas FGM yes. is, talked, is, is talked about in bad light, how about the forced marriages, whereas other then, people are... Actually, in precise, Uganda so, Women Lawyers Association yeah. versus Attorney General, yeah. that case so. declared FGM unconstitutional. Yeah. So, so I, I think yeah. the court has been actually very intentional Just, about... Yeah. You, you know, really getting this bad. But practices. now the groundwork yeah. is yet Those to be who seen. looked at that uh, circulating video mm. uh, of that mm. young girl being forced into a marriage, mm. the, the loud noise, the alarm she made mm. was really, you know, touching. you know, it was really touching. Mm. You would really feel, and, and all these are old people that would Six be, you know, giving people. her protection. protection. I think she even had. I think an auntie, I don't know, her auntie. A, her auntie on the border border. Mm. The one, you know, uh, you know, is an it's AD of, of, of a bad vice, of a vice that is really very sad, repugnant. Mm. So I really condemn yeah. such kind of practice. Mm. It should, and we should stand tall yeah. to speak. What is, but even if there is practice set of trade in the, those ages, it was wrong. Then you could say, ah, it was easy to say, ah, for you, I'm copy, let us sell you off. And someone would earn. You get it? But it was wrong. When we moved to modernity, we saw that self trade was wrong. Yeah. And we condemned it. Yeah. We have also advanced. A girl child has a right yeah. as any other person. Let them 
have that let them enjoy it so choice. instead of saying ah it has been practiced for so long we need to stand and condemn you know uh, bad societal practices, practices. as wrong things okay. so that we move and have a new narrative and a new shift for our society hence development and uh, you know socially and economically fair enough colleagues i should be able to cut this show this very second but i am going to give you guys 30 seconds each to give us your last words on the show and i'll be very strict on 30 seconds so i'll begin with olivia i'll come to you then clinton then shifa your last words on the show basically to the young people out there not even the sky is the limit always look out for yourself and those around you and make sure that we have a collaborative approach towards attaining our success if you do not fight for what you want no one else is going to fight for you above all fear god and be hard working because hard work pays beautiful nelson uh to fellow young people of this country uganda and abroad i just want to say that uh, it's high time mm. we built our confidence to face the reality speak of what you know of what we stand for and so that we negotiate better in the spaces we are you know we we, we, we fear mm. it's high time we do that mm. so that we have a fair you know inclusion um inclusive policies uh we monitor implement them other than being in the places of comfort uh, if, if there the is always betrayal there is always betrayal of a, of, a, of a few people who would think that because of tokenism they are so better positioned so they cannot stand tall to speak in confidence i just argue all young people and all ugandan stand in solidarity with young people to speak against what is wrong and preach what is right let's shape the new narrative about young people as people who are credible people who are trustworthy people that can work uh you know tirelessly to make the economy better and to shape the narrative you know the, the economy of this country amazing like that, yeah. amazing Bill Clinton. Uh, as for me to first go back from the, from the social sphere I must encourage uh, the viewers uh, to embrace the, the pub from the discussions of the of the health public health or advertisement is more 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 important uh, you should address things before even they happen to you so i mean prevention is better than cure that is what we should understand so p- p- public health or public address is really it should it is really 99% medicine so we should venture in what these doctors and what uh, the, the, the weather forecasters tell us so we should really get so much informed and uh, to my to our viewers i really encourage a youth an energetic youth a really action oriented or service oriented youth uh, do not i do not i do not want to be the the, the preacher of the God, of of the grace that you have to sit down and comfortably wait for things for the messiah to bring things for you no 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 wake up venture in what you do best avoid a lot of noise from so many political things waves that will take you astray wake up work get ready and bring what you think you are good at and then before you do the blame game i mean support yourself psychologically uh, physically and even technically so that is what i can leave with uh, with, with the public and uh, uh, to the rest of our viewers amazing yes shifa you have the last words ah sure okay so going to the theme of discussion i'd love to tell everyone that it is important to acknowledge okay it is it is important not to despise and undermine people based on their ages that is for the topic of discussion and for the youth round table i am this is for the panelists this is a place for us to discuss but we should be open to you know learn and learn and even we learn whatever opinions that everything we come with but thank you for watching and thank you for hosting us it was good time well, uh, maybe to leave this with the rest of of, of our youths I, i ask that we should all cooperate and really join this theme is really very rich with ideas yeah. the intergenerational solidarity one great man martin luther king jr once said that if you can't live together as brothers then let's die together as fools <laughs> that carries a lot of that is uh, a, a good way to end <laughs> a good way to end this show well ladies and gentlemen 
Comrade Olivia, Comrade Nelson, uh, Dugu Bill Clinton, and Comrade Chifa. Many thanks for sparing your time to be on the Youth Round Table. Of course, the technical team, uh, the, the, the producers, thank you for ensuring that this show airs right on time. Well, I'm only a moderator, but I also have an opinion that is enshrined in the words of Samora Machel. Samora Machel was the Frelimo Liberation leader of Mozambique, and he had this to say, that the liberation of young people, the empowerment of young people should not be seen as an act of humanitarian uh, you know, uh, commitment, but rather as a sustainable means of empowering and you know, developing any nation. Well, I hope those words, we can reflect on them as we commemorate International Youth Day. But also I think that um, every day should be Youth Day because mm -hmm. if, we are, if we constitute 70% of the country's population or of the world at large, why shouldn't every day be our day? Why should everything be about us? Well, nothing for us without us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being on this part of this episode of the Youth Roundtable. Until next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye. See you.